I'm back with a frequently requested video, a what's in my pin case update. I have here one of the new limited edition Neocrits Voyage or Voyage um, pin cases. This is one of the, if you guys aren't familiar with the Neocrits, okay, first of all, I disclaimer, I am stuffing this more full than you should. I don't think it's good for your pens to be, you know, stuffed this tightly together, especially if you've got high-end pens in your case, which I do. So please don't stuff your pen case like I do, okay? I only do this because, well, this sounds disrespectful, but I'm not hoping my pens last forever because there are always more pens <laughs> coming that I need to love. <laughs> so that, this is why I, you know, when you see me do fountain pen videos and such, you may see that I don't treat the pens as nicely as you should. So I just want to have that disclaimer. So I usually have this one on my desk but it's really handy to be able to just like throw in your bag like this. So when you have it on your desk, uh, you can have it more like this and then it's like a pin cup. So these are basically my current favorites that I've just attached to a lot lately. The one I wanna start with is actually my, my most favorite lately. The friction which I understand is kind of a love it or hate it pen. The, I, I find a, a lot of people who don't love the friction have a hard time accepting the trade-off of what it means to have an, an, an ink that will actually disappear. So for example, the black is not as bold as you're gonna find in something like a non-erasable black gel ink. For example, the high tech seat, that's gonna be way more bold. But I have found that there are some colors that do show up bold in the friction line, like the violet I find very bold and I tend to use that a lot. So this friction, this is the Friction Biz 2. And one reason I really like it is that it is a friction multi-pin, so I can have more than one friction color at my disposal. I prefer the 0.38 Ball Slim refills the most, which this pin will take and those refills actually come in 20 different colors, so I'm very enthusiastic about them. When you, when you purchase this pen, it comes pre-filled with a black and a red refill. I immediately swapped those out for a violet and a wine red. Sometimes I will use, I almost always will have one of these two colors in and then I'll swap one or the other out with the brown because I, I think that's a gorgeous color also in the Friction Ball Slim. So this pen can also be refilled with the 0.5 multi refills, but those only come in blue, black, red, and green. So if you want the real colorful options, you're gonna need to use the Friction Ball Slim refills in 0.38. The eraser is hidden underneath the cap I really, really like this for a couple reasons. Aside from personally loving the Friction ink, I use it, I've said this a lot of times on my channel before, but I use the Friction ink for doing things like daily like calorie and exercise log because that's somewhere I find I have to erase often and I don't wanna use pencil because I want something more colorful. So, you know, what I'll do is say I'm keeping track of my daily calorie intake. Sometimes when I'm writing down a food, I don't have time to look it up right then, so I'll estimate the calories just so I can make sure to stay on track for the whole day. But then if I, when I go back and look up for certain the calories, I'll need to do some erasing. Or maybe I'll plan out my what I'm going to eat that day, and then if it changes, I'll go back and erase it. So I end up using this every day. I use it also for work notes. And believe it or not, I use it the way you'd use a pencil when you're working on your taxes. So of course I would not file my taxes using an erasable ink like this, but if you're doing the different worksheets and stuff as you're doing your taxes, this is super helpful. Another reason I like this one a lot is because the original Friction Multi-Pens, you may or may not have seen 
They're very thick and fat. The eraser is exposed. And the end result is that it looks up kind of ends up looking kind of like a spaceship. Some of the some of them are really cool, but especially the new 0.38 colors in lavender and mint green. They're really pretty colors, but I find that barrel is just too thick for me. I also like to sometimes throw this pin inside of my Midori Traveler's notebook zip pocket, and you don't want a fat pin in there, you want the slim. I basically was so attached to these that I ended up just getting really excited that I could get two different colors in this. This one comes in four or five different colors. There's a beautiful like matte gray, there's a silver, there's this pretty, um, it's like shell pink. They might, let me see if I can see what it's called. Um, and then, no, they just call this pink. And then um, this one is a beautiful color. It's somewhere in between a lavender and a blue. I wonder if it'll show up here. So I think this color is really, really pretty in person. Or maybe I would say it's like a deep violet blue. So between these two, I'm just really obsessed lately. All right, well, I think I just spent five minutes on one pen, so I really should continue on. There's just a friction single. Okay, so this is sort of an interesting thing I've been working on lately. This is the Timeline Ballpoint, which I love. And I actually really like the, the ballpoint ink that it comes with. The It's an acro ink, and I think it writes really nicely. Now, I have been really liking this Sakura Balsai Knock Yellow. I normally am not a yellow ink person, but this ink, it's like, it's the boldest yellow that I've come across in terms of a gel pen that I like. So I've been really into this lately. Now this, I get emails a lot about how to refill it with, you know, like a colorful gel refill. And so I've been experimenting. So I don't endorse this yet, but I took a Balsai Knock refill and I actually cut it. So what I needed was, I needed a refill that became narrower for the maybe, what is this, maybe an inch or so, but became narrower at the no, at the bottom like inch of the nose. So most refills won't work in this pen. Now this one I cut. <laughs> And you can see there's actually, you know, where I cut it, there is still gel. So I don't know yet. Oh, this doesn't want to focus. Sorry about that. I don't know yet if this is going to really work out. But I've been testing it and trying it out. So that's kind of what's going on there in my pen case. Now, this below, excuse me. This notebook I have below here is a, is a yellow paper notebook, so that's not going to show the yellow ink nicely for you, but I do wanna swatch it because I know people will ask. So let me set these aside. And this is more of a white paper, so I think it would be better. So here is the yellow, which you can see compared to a lot of yellows, it's, I don't know what the word is, is the word saturated? I don't know, but I really like it. So I've been playing around with that lately, and again, I'm just kind of hanging, I'm trying to, you know, maybe use this for a month so that I can see if it, if having the top clipped off where the gel still was is gonna be a negative effect on this pen. Now, if you know of a timeline ballpoint refill that's other than the you know standard ballpoint refill that it has, please let me know. The timeline gel refill does not fit in the timeline ballpoint pen. 
it's kind of funny. The timeline gel pen will take the timeline ballpoint refill, but this timeline ballpoint will not take the timeline gel. And that and it's unfortunate because a lot of people really like gel ink, and the, I think the timeline ballpoint um, barrels have some really neater colors in a way. This one is called light blue, I think. We still sell it on the site, so you can see. And actually, this pen is on sale right now. But yes, do let me know if you know of another fun way of refilling it, and I'll try to keep you guys posted on if the Sako to Ball Sign Knock insert cut down works. Okay, it's gonna take a while to get through this. All right, let me take out these two, because these are both newish high-end multi-pens to our store, and they're similar in a way. So this one is by Jetstream. Now you guys might know the Jetstream Prime Monochromatic. That's a single, it's a high-end pen for a single Jetstream um, refill. This one allows you to put three Jetstream refills in it, and it comes in 0.5 and 0.7, and uh, different body colors. It is a really, I mean, it feels like a really nice pen. Now, something that's very comparable by Pilot that is using the Acro ink, so it's sort of their hybrid ink, really smooth ink version, and it looks very similar, only this one does incorporate an eraser because it is a two plus one instead of a three. So if you like the pencil, this is a good option for you. And it does have the eraser under the cap. You can use two refills in there of your choice of color and size. This one is a little bit a lower price point than the Jetstream Prime, so that also makes it nice. And it does look, you know, they both look and feel really nice, like high-end, um, heavier metal pens. They'd be great pens if you wanted to have, you know, a classier looking pen in a meeting. And, you know, I choose pink because I like pink, but there are some less fun colors. There are some more, you know, standard plain colors available, like your grays and blacks and silvers and blues. All right, so I think that's all that needs to be said about these. This I probably showed a lot. This is the I plus barrel in the metallic line, and this one is a metallic blue. I I made these and put it on top just for fun, for more sparkle. <laughs> Takes the slicky custom multi refills. It seems that the slicky barrels, the slicky multi barrels, are being discontinued by. Pentel and that they're moving to just having this I plus. So if you like the slicky barrels, you might want to think about getting them while you can. The this I plus metallic seems to be a limited edition and it comes in different colors in both a three color and a five color option. This is this will all like this has been my favorite for about a year now. And I actually was able to get more inventory of these, which is really exciting because I was originally told there weren't any more, but then uh, I guess somebody like sent their inventory back and so we were able to get some. So this is a Snoopy 5 color. This is, sorry, a pre-fill, but it's not the standard pre-fill shape. Like this pre-fill is usually shaped like this. This one is the pre-fill in the cosmetic series. We we do still have these. I love these. Everyone knows I love the pre-fill. Although, if you're new to the pre-fill, I would recommend getting the Sarasa ink refills because chances are you prefer gel pens over hybrid or ballpoint ink. Some people start with the Sudati refills in their pre-fill, which I actually like, but then they're disappointed because they were hoping for a gel refill. So. If you want to try the pre-fill, try the pre-fill Sarasa ink. Comes in three different sizes and a lot of different colors. So yeah, so these take the exact same refills. They're quite a different shape. This one is like my forever favorite, and but I think this one's really pretty too. All right, we have here, this is something we don't sell, although I think maybe we should. 
This is a little, it looks like a little pen, but it's actually a pair of scissors and I find it super handy. So that's what that is. This is, you know, <laughs> I've talked about this umpteen times as being my favorite pen. I probably don't need to talk about it again. It's the Uniball Signo DX in 0.38 Bordeaux Black. The Bordeaux Black only comes in 0.38. I did find in my collection recently and I would kind of brought it out just to hang out with it for a while. I don't know. This is proof that once upon a time, Sanford was selling the this pen in, in the United States as a medium. And I think it's it must be 0.7 or maybe even 1.0, probably 0.7. But I think that was short-lived. Sanford has the exclusive rights to Mitsubishi's products in the US. So that's why you don't see a lot of the Japanese pens here in the US. This is a Coletto Lumio. They seem to be discontinuing the Lumio barrels, so that's another one that if you like it, you might want to stock up. This one is Metallic Violet, I think it's called. It looks like a metal barrel, but it is actually a metallic plastic. So this, um, you know, just to be clear, this is still a lighter, a lighter barrel. It's not going to be heavy like this metal barrel. But some people do get confused by that and they think that the Lumio is metal just because it's metallic. It has the kind of like old style cap. They're going to a more easy open style, which I think might be why they're discontinuing the Lumio and they're instead favoring the Coletto 1000 barrel, but I like the Lumio better. We still do have some if you're interested before they go away forever. You can just see what colors I've chosen here. All right, I have a sparkly highlighter because I'm obsessed with these, the Kirarichi highlighters. They really do sparkle. Let me give you a sample because some of you may not have seen them before. Let's see if I can focus on... Is the sparkle showing up? There, I think it did. There, I got it. I had to catch the sun. Okay. Okay, this is a Lamy pen that I have never used because I cannot get excited about it. Okay, so here's the thing. I love the Prera which I feel like is a much nicer pen than the Lamy. The Lamy is like bigger. It's like, yuck. I don't like, I just don't like it. But it's such a popular pen that I figured I better learn to like it. I don't know. So I got the Lamy and I have here some violet cartridges because I was hoping to get motivated to try it. And I haven't yet. But really, when I compare these two, one is just much prettier to me and the other one's like cheaper looking and I just think the Lamy is just cheapy looking. I know that fountain pen people really like the Lamy, so I'm open to liking it. I I don't get snooty about my fountain pens. So for me, it's just a preference in terms of like look and feel when I'm writing with it. Okay, this is a pen. Oh my gosh, I actually did a whole video on this and some other gifts that were sent to me by one of my customers called Tracy. It was such a fun surprise. And then the problem was, the video I filmed, I realized when we were editing, I had been chewing gum. And actually there were four videos I filmed where I was chewing gum. One of them we released because I just wanted to like try and see how it would go. And I got some like negative comments about it. And so I thought, okay, 
you know, I really appreciate your feedback. You don't like if there's gum in the background. So I decided not to release the others. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to refilm that video because I like, you know, it was as I was opening the gift. That was sort of the point of the video it was like happy mail unboxing. But anyway, this is one of the pens from it. This is a Korean pen. And I was so excited when I was sent this because I had been looking for it. I, did, I love everything about this pen. And she also sent me a brown one, which I also love because you guys know I love burgundies and browns. If I can find a link to where she would have got these, it says, I don't think you can see here. It says Paul and Paulina. And again, like I'm certain it's a Korean company. It's gorgeous. I, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it's an expensive pen at all. But it's this super fine burgundy ink is, is rare to find. So I, I really cherish this. Okay, this is a new highlighter. It's the Uni Propus Window Quick, Quick Dry. Now, the way this works is if you've ever been highlighting, especially in like textbook paper or, you know, any anytime you're highlighting and you have to turn pages, you know, you're like, you're not waiting for the page to dry. And textbook paper is sort of notorious about staying wet a long time. So this is really meant for if you're doing highlighting like that and you don't want the highlighter to like stay wet and stick to the other the, uh, the other side of the previous page this is supposed to be sort of like solving your problem again this is the uni propus window quick dry it comes in five different high traditional highlight colors and yeah i have been meaning to test this out and i haven't yet okay I have a few things left. This one is a metallic brush pen. I have been doing some lettering practice lately, some brush pen lettering practice, and I've been really liking these Zig Fude Biore metallic brush pens. I'll post a link to them below. They come in really pretty different colors, like metallic green, metallic light green, metallic purple, you know, metallic red, gold. And so these um, have been a lot of fun. And I also have been really into this, which is very similar. This is the Kude Take Metallic uh, Wink of Luna brush pen. And what I do with these, and maybe I'll have a whole different video on this because this video is already like over 20 minutes long, but I, I paint my stamps with these and it works super well. And actually I think you could do it with this too, but I paint my stamps with these instead of using stamp pads, it just works remarkably well. Now the only thing I would say is I'm not, I don't know the proper way to clean stamps, so... Hopefully, I'm not giving a bunch of people anxiety when you look at my dirty stamp here. I think that I think that there is a proper way to clean the stamp after using the Wink of Luna brush pen. So I'll figure out what that is and incorporate it into a video because these work so well. If you're into stamping, you would love the Wink of Luna and Wink of Stella brush pens. Like they make it so easy. And actually, I'll kind of show you if you use just the Zig metallic brush pen. And I'm really just, I don't know if you can see this. I'm just pa uh, painting right on there. It's very easy to control. Um, you know, for someone like me who's not good at this kind of thing, I find this really simple and I find it hard to find stamp pads that I like. Now obviously you could be incorporating different colors in here. You could get it. I got a little bit too white here. 
I think they work really well and they're really cool and I'm really excited about them. You can use these in a similar way that you'd use these. Okay, finally, the last two things in my pen case, I want to kind of focus on a little bit because I love these, they're my favorites, but people use them incorrectly. The Pentel Arends. This is the first pencil I ever came across that comes in a point two. I've talked about this pencil in my tools I recommend if you're studying Japanese video, but I've, I've since found out that people are, are basically using this pencil in a way that it gets abused and breaks. <laughs> Number one, you can see when you're transporting the pen or carrying pencil or when you're carrying it around, the pipe is inside the nose. You do not see the pipe out here. Now let me show you what the pipe looks like. Here it is. When you're writing with it, you want the pipe to be out. However, the second problem people have is they extend the lead like you would more with a traditional mechanical pencil, where they extend the lead out like that. You actually don't want to. You want the pipe out, but not the lead. And you're able to begin, you know, writing with it. So that was me writing with it with the lead not extended. I had no breakage on a point two with, you know, letting the, the, I let the pencil feed the lead. That's part of the feature of the pencil. So I'm not clicking the lead out, but the pipe is out. Now, when I'm done using the pencil, I push the pipe back in. So your pipe is out in here push it back in, watch my right hand also, okay? If you go like, if you let go of this, you're not going to be able to push it back in, like that, okay? So otherwise your pipe's going to get bent and your pencil's going to break. Here is a little diagram that's kind of showing uh, not to feed the lead out of your pipe when you're using the pencil. That's very counterintuitive to people. Same kind of, th now this, sorry to move on too fast, this also comes in a point three now and also comes in a style where you can get a grip on the end. Love, love, love the Arends. The Del Guard is one of my current <laughs> absolute favorites. It's now available in a point three, which is great started as just a 0.5, and now it's available in 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.7. Okay, so the thing about the Delgard is it also has some pipe technology, and when you're using it, it can feel a little bouncy because a pipe will come out to protect your tip. So in the Delgard, you do want to get a little bit of lead out, but you don't want to get too much because you're using, especially if you're using like a fine tip. So I'm going to start with about that much. Now, as I'm writing with it, Delgard can feel a little bouncy. Now, I find that the bounce does not bother me at all. I really like it. I think it's really comfortable. Some people, I can imagine some people would not like it. They would maybe feel like it's... There's like too much action, <laughs> but for me, I feel like it's a super comfortable, soft kind of right. I do think that I end up having to extend the lead manually in this one. But basically what's going on here is they're both they're both having slightly different features. 
that are trying to protect the lead and so you're getting less breakage even though you're using a 0.2 or a 0.3 lead, which are super fine. So again, this one's the Delgard. And this color is one of the new really pretty colors in 0.3. And here's the Arends. All right. Please let me know if you have any questions about what you've just seen in my pin case. Especially let me know if you've figured out a great refill for the timeline ballpoints. Because a lot of us want to know. <laughs> All right, have a great week. Bye-bye.